Hey, and welcome back to another Twin Motion video. This one is so exciting. These are my favorite videos of the year by far when it comes to Twin Motion. And then that is the New Year updates. And what do we have here? We have Twin Motion 2023. It's a preview, but nonetheless, this is what's coming out. You can believe it. So before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which come on, hopefully you do. That's why you're here. You want to find out what's new. Then demolish that like button really helps me out quite a lot really does also consider subscribing that does too all right getting into it now quite a lot here so I, i'm going to refer to what's new on one screen and then show you what's new on another so first thing is not really anything to show you more to tell you that twin motion now supports unreal engine 5 which it, that doesn't mean a whole lot, but it's mainly from uh, improvements to the viewport and uh, display. And, and we're just talking about comparing to previous versions, which is totally fine. Um, that doesn't mean a whole lot yet, like on its own. But in the end, you'll see throughout all the features that that does mean quite a lot. So in general, you can just kind of imagine that the quality is a bit higher in kind of overall and in general, which is great. If you're familiar with Unreal Engine 5 or even now 5.1, it is amazing and runs beautifully. And we have always kind of talked about Twinmotion as being the younger brother or uh, cousin, however you want to label it, as uh, Twinmotion is to Unreal. So interesting stuff there. And then finally, we have this, which is so interesting. And I was greeted with this when I first opened it. We have this beautiful home screen, and do I like it? It's fine. It, it kind of does everything we need it to do, but I see a lot of potential here, and what kind of potential do I see? Well, that is with templates, and what we are actually looking at templates, which is fantastic. We have the option of making a new scene, opening in this, another scene that we already have made. Uh, we have templates here. We have architecture or product. So basically, it's one of these four, so you can see all four. And you just simply click one and it opens it up and as you would expect, which is really cool because these things are literally set up for you, ready to go. And not only that, this is great for learning. If you're new to Twin Motion, which maybe some of you are, first, I would encourage you to check out other Twin Motion videos that I've made because it, we covered basically everything in the entire program. But also, this is it gives it basically builds you a scene, whether you're looking at all these different products or not. And these product templates will build the scene, give you an idea of how things work, how things set up, what cre creates a nice looking scene, all those types of things. But where is the real potential that I see in this start screen, splash screen, whatever? That is templates in, its, in of itself because, you know, tons of different programs, including Unreal, that are, you can create your own templates and i.e. you create an environment, you have assets in there, you set things up a certain way, you have settings set, and then you can save that as a template. Fantastic stuff. Why do I think that, why did I think that all along that would be something that Twinmotion would implement? Well, because, because Unreal has it. Unreal Engine has had that for years, of course. And with this being very much related to Unreal Twinmotion, I would expect that we would see that. And here we go. We see we have these four templates not much you can do besides choose one or not. But from there, I my guess is down the road, we will start to see the ability to add our own templates. And I'll show you another reason why I think that here in a minute. So it's cool. I can click any one of these. It's great on new scene. Um, we are working with architecture more than products. So I'm going to click on architecture. And it's as simple as downloading this. We've seen this all before. And once this is downloaded, we can simply open that. Now, we have the option here to show this on startup or not, which, great, I, you know, most of the time I'm not going to need this, but I might need it. And so how do I get here? Well, I got back here by going to file and then show start screen. So here we go. I'll show you that in just a second. Once this is downloaded, we can open up this specific architecture template, which is really cool. So I'm going to click open here. Don't care about saving an empty file. And once this loads up, we can see what just a default architecture looks like. Look, we have an actual landscape. It's not just a, a, a an endless tiled floor. That's what this looks like also. But at the end of the day, there's a lot more going on. We have a lot here. So we can look at this template file later on. But 
you know, nonetheless, it looks more like a useful scene than not. We have a starting ground and a landscape, so a little bit more. That's fine. <clears throat> Okay, so let me go to the preferences and show you how to do that. So file, and then here is as simple as going to show home panel. That's what this is. Fantastic, easy stuff. Uh, but then also when looking at the preferences, there are a few updates here that are probably worth knowing about. Uh, starting with appearance, really nothing here is uh, we're sending a lot of data. Choose, check this or don't. It's kind of up to you. Uh, quality is basically all the same. We do have dynamic resolution, which is great for lower quality systems. Uh, maybe you are jumping in and out of <laughs> uh, good and bad video card situations. Uh, yeah, I don't know, that kind of thing. Uh, but the main thing here is settings. Obviously, we, this is kind of all the same. We've seen these updated units for a while. Timestamps, kind of all the same. Graphics, unchanged. Also, we have all these presets for path tracers. Nothing's changed there. Same thing with resolutions, sky dome, grass fading, custom paths. This is where things are get very interesting. And so I've, I've received a lot of questions in the past. How oh, can I bring in my own this can i bring in my own that well obviously we can import models and uh, textures and all that all day in twin motion but can we alter what's there i.e can we take a texture and like you know the base color map of a texture edit that in photoshop and bring it back in basically kind of altering a a twin motion material that literally ships with twin, twin motion can we do that well not really we are getting closer to that because look at this we have our user library, Megascans library, we basically libraries for everything. And so here's my, the next piece of evidence that I can at least use to hopefully convince you that down the line, we're going to be able to make our own twin motion template files. And that is the templates folder here, the template, template library. You literally choose on your computer where these things will go. And obviously there's a default location they go because hello. Um, they, some of them install with Twinmotion is the point. So if I click on my user library, I don't have anything downloaded or I haven't, I have nothing saved there. I do have this, this cloud library here and everything's going to fall within this cloud library folder by default. Great. So whenever I come into here and any one of these would work, if I go into cloud library, I can see like, what are these? Well, um, because I have nothing downloaded, this is basically a fresh install. What, what are these? Well, these are in fact the four templates. They are the four template files, which is fantastic. Now, can I confirm that for sure? Mm, no, but I'd be willing to bet most of my money that those are the four template files because it's the template library. Cool. So take that with what you will. These are the thing. The amazing, the cool thing now is you can clear this, you know, just not worry about it, or you can literally set a new folder location. If you want to that to be on in a specific folder, maybe it's get it a shared folder. Oh, here we go. Things start to get better. Now, if you have multiple people mapped to the same textures folder, yes, we, we are. That's a rabbit hole. We'll, we'll get there later too. Um, direct link. Nothing's really changed here. Um, yep. But the gizmo, this is cool. So the gizmo is, you know, the thing that basically when you select an object, you can rotate, move, scale, all that kind of, th all that kind of stuff. But I have the angle snap. So what is it going to snap to by default when I rotate it? Fantastic, because I could have it at one degree, like just literally just free rotation, or I can have it in increments of five or 10, whatever I want, which is fantastic. I might set this by default to 45, 210, 290, I don't know, uh, because a lot of times I'm not working with like super, super fine angles, and I can just input those angles in that specific element if I want to. And then auto camera facing, you know, uh, I don't know if you've ever selected objects and the, the gizmo is kind of like, it, it kind of updates, like it's physic not its location, but its location and orientation to that object based on where your camera is, where you, what object you've selected. If that, if you leave this check, this auto camera facing, then the gizmo is going to basically just orient itself correctly to where you can use it easily to that object that you've selected based on where your camera is and everything. So uh, I like that because if you uncheck this, then that gizmo is going to be static no matter what, no matter where you're selecting this object from, that gizmo will be static. So I like, I like it reorienting, but then again, we'll have to test it out. Maybe not. Everything else here is really nothing you need to worry about. You know, we've got auto save, fantastic export, nothing new. Uh, I did notice warming up. So update reflections, it'll update reflections before it exports smog, haze quality, it will update and 
not only update, but add quality to the smog and the haze. You want those things, obviously. But warming up, I forgot what that was entirely, but warming up is it will update the particles. You know, like we have update reflections and smoke and haze. That makes sense. You want to just do the exact same thing, but for particles. Like if you have a fire going, it will update the fire to that moment. And so a good example of this is if you've ever had some sort of animation and specifically with particles in this case, and you have taken that screenshot and you didn't like it. You basically had to keep taking screenshots of the same image to get the updated uh, animation or like location of the animation where you wanted it. Whereas now it will update based on when it, it exports at that moment, which is really nice. That's really nice. And then everything is, else here is pretty typical and what we'd expect. So great stuff. Very cool. All right, moving on now. Uh, we're looking at a new file format. So new file format as in when I control save, I have a new twin motion file .tm, like we, we, we know that, but uh, the tm file format itself is everything within it has changed, not the .tm. Um, so I, I'm going to read this because they're very specific things that are pretty impactful and it might be hard to notice these at first, but hopefully down the line we'll be able to. So first, deduplicating meshes and textures. So bringing in multiple model, maybe you have the same, you have this, uh, multiple models from the same model that you're bringing in. They all have the same or similar textures and you would always get this pop-up that is boom, you know, hey, do you want to copy this? Do you want to replace this material? Do you want, yeah. And it's like, well, I, I just don't want to mess with this. But at now, Twinmotion literally uh, itself, the file format is smart enough to know, hey, that material exists already in the project. So then it's just, it becomes a part of the material that's already in the project, which, hello, that's what we all wanted anyways, which is awesome. And then we have better multi-threading multi-threading being like processing power using your multi-threaded processor. And so what does that really mean? Well, uh, specifically it says with a new file format, scenes are saved with a multi-threaded compression on the multi-core hardware. Great. So what is it again? What is this really saying? Well, uh, you would probably want to have a multi-threaded processor to take advantage of the better processing power that this file format has. Fortunately, nowadays I can't think of a processor that has it is only single core. That doesn't make any sense. And I also can't think of many that are below quad core, four cores. But for your case, uh, for your sanity, especially if you, especially if you use Google Chrome, I'd recommend you use at least eight, six to eight threads. If you have a processor that has six to eight cores, you're good to go. I would recommend, always recommend more. There's some great processors out there. Uh, leave me questions in the comments if you want to know specifically which one I recommend or anything like that, but definitely multi, multi cores way to go. And then embedded HDRI files, all HDRI files within the library itself are now considerably compressed and embedded within the twin motion files. This is great. This is really great. All that means is you have better graphics performances. You use less video RAM. That's exciting too which means everything's going to run fast, run better. So clearly a more efficient format here. We have added new materials for the product design industry. You know, I'm not doing as much with the product design side, but nonetheless, I love seeing new materials because I can just use them. Um, that is specifically with, within the fabric, leather, plastic, and metal. And you'll know that they are new because look at all these, they're very nice. You'll know they are new because we get to the bottom and Hey, we need to download them. So, Maybe one day these will become a part of Twinmotion, shipped within Twinmotion, and essentially be pre-downloaded. Uh, but nonetheless, these are really nice. See, they're all 4K. You know, if I come into Concrete, I don't have any of those that I would download. Things like that. Uh, if we looked at the plastic or leathers. You know, we, we'd see the same thing. So cool stuff. Very nice to see. This is a, another big one with materials glass. So first of all, we can already see a bit of a difference in the, just the preview. So we have two previews or two. Like I get the technically previews within the preview for a glass material. What are we looking at here? Well, here we use the mirror. We can really tell. Um, we're basically looking in and out, and we're, so we're looking at the material on the sphere, and then we're looking at a scene with the material applied. But you'll notice it's applied to the actual sphere. So whenever I look at the frosted glass, I can see okay, I'm looking through 
essentially through the frosted glass at the material as opposed to the mirror be i'm not seeing <laughs> i'm not seeing the sphere at all because everything is reflected back that's just how a mirror works um so interesting stuff you can see the scene is just this what looks like an out outdoor office lobby or something like that so it really gives you a good idea of what you would expect looking through the material as well as what it looks like on the sphere really cool so with that said i like this because um, it does play into some of the updates specifically with glass so uh, just to show some of the updates with glass let's go ahead and add a nice little box here maybe a smaller box Perfect, there's my box, and then I can start looking at glass. So first of all, we have a clear glass. Like, literally, it's called clear glass, which is awesome. Um, great. So let's look at this clear glass. I'm going to apply this there, and, yeah, it is clear. So first of all, the main thing here is that we have the type of glass. Whether it's standard glass, whether it's just glass, or if it's literally colored glass. And so none of this really changes because that's all impacted by the tint. So... Uh, I'm going to change this to something a little more obvious, more like a red. And so we could see the standard, obviously it's a clear glass still, quote, but it's red tinted. Whereas is it actually colored glass and not just the clear glass that is tinted? You can see the clear difference here. It's very obvious. It's night and day. And obviously that makes sense. Uh, this is, we're going to start to get into some of the more overall material updates with this, but nonetheless, we will cover everything. Uh, the reflectivity when it comes to glass is now gone. There's no such thing as reflectivity for glass in twin motion anymore. And whether, maybe you like that, maybe you don't. Uh, in the end, it will make more sense because of how it works with every other type of material, i.e. PBR materials, physically based rendered materials. And that is here within roughness. So just imagine that the reflectivity is now the roughness, but just know that roughness is kind of the inverse to <laughs> reflectivity. So let me show you. So roughness here is at 0%. Actually here, a mirror is great. Um, if we see the roughness here at 0%, we see we have a mirror. If we bring up our roughness all the way to 100%, then we have a complete not mirror, <laughs> the complete inverse of a mirror. Um, so by default, I'm pretty sure most of these glasses will have a roughness of zero until we get into uh, some of these other weird glasses. Maybe it uh, looks like these don't even, these all have a roughness of zero. So basically all glass has a default of zero until we come down here and we can see different things. And I'll get into this here in a second too. Uh, but if we come back to just clear glass, uh, let's move on down the line here. We can see opacity. You know, we know what this does, transparency or not. Uh, roughness, we just talked about. We can obviously come into more here and get into it quite a bit, change the index of refraction. There's a lot of, that we can do here because it is now a physically based material. Fantastic. Uh, into the settings, obviously the scale, whatever. Uh, metalness, this is very interesting because like before, all materials into emotion, mainly the glass, did not have this as an option. Uh, so metalness, it's now, it used to be a, a slider between zero and one, which that's fine. It's kind of all the same, whereas now it is a slider between zero and hundred percent. And so you can kind of think of it like the roughness because you know, roughness and metalness go into play, but they're two different things. They're each their own, let's call it map within, uh, a PBR material. And we can see there's literally a metalness map here, which is great. And we can easily change this. It's harder to see here. So maybe with reflective glass, we can see the metalness change. And that's really cool because we, we basically have more than just zero or one on or off now that we have a percentage slider. Now, something I will say, if we move away from glass for just a second, if we go into just a basic metal, so maybe this, this one there, and I go to metalness, you'll notice nothing changes until I go below 50%. And so it's, again, this is like zero or one, which I think is a little silly. Like <laughs> I think twin motion fell a bit short in this regard because it is zero. Nothing's happening. Really a lot should be happening here. It should not be on or off zero or one, whatever, just kind of something to be aware about because it, it that's pretty impactful knowing that we have this slider that doesn't really act like the slider that it is. That type of thing. So not a huge deal. Now, the main thing I want to tell you about glass is that 
none of these are all that special. If it's just basic glass, whether it's a mirror or frost glass, they're not that special. And what do I mean by that? Well, if I look at any of these, they all have the same like different kinds of settings, but all, all of these default materials, all they are, are just different variations of all these settings. So like there's no maps involved. Like it's just a blank map because it's just a color, um, that type of thing. But you know, that's just something to be aware of. You can achieve all of these types of glass from starting with the clear glass. You know, if you're more comfortable in just making your own glass from clear glass or mirrors, like wherever, you can start wherever and you can end up with the same result, which is, that's the whole point of a PBR material is that you just change some values and you can get different results, whether it is clear glass or a mirror. So that's great. If we look further within the clear glass or any glass material here, we have tint and we have iridescence, which, ooh, fun stuff. Now we'll save this for another video, like really getting into it, but you can go pretty crazy with this. You know, it's very nice to see all this kind of stuff here, which is really nice. Okay. And so this, this next update is the update that you've been waiting for the little piece. This is something that we knew it was coming. I totally knew it, but it is with the data Smith exporter. So what the heck is that? Well, if I come up to file and I go to export, Look, it used to only export all libraries. And what is this? Well, it's just a basic CSV with all the information in the file and who really cares about that? Not a lot. Some people do, but not nearly enough. But now we can export to a Datasmith file. And so if you don't know what a Datasmith file, it is all of the information that's coming from Revit or Rhino, whatever program you're using and bringing it and direct linking into Emotion. So that's what we care about. It's all the BIM information, basically everything model related. And not only that, but you can take that exact same format along with every, literally everything with a very few limitations at this point, but everything that you've added within Twinmotion and basically up, you can more or less call it updating the data Smith file and then directly importing that into Unreal Engine. And so you literally take Twinmotion, pick it up and then dump it as it is, literally as it is, because everything's essentially one-to-one -one into Unreal Engine, which is so crazy. Now we have, we have done a video on the Twinmotion importer on the Unreal Engine side a long time ago, uh, because it, it really did. That was the biggest game changer, but now it's so easy, like way easy. So just to show you an example of what this can look like, it's very cool. Like we're going to save this for another video because there's a lot going on, um, but you can see left and right. We have twin motion here on the left and the way it, everything is laid out in the model in twin motion, like in the scene itself is the exact same way within Unreal Engine, but clearly you can see it looks better, but everything is right there. The hierarchy is the same. Everything looks the same. It's working. And that is so cool. Like, I love that so much. And I cannot wait to explore that and do that video for you. <laughs> All right, moving on from that, because that, I mean, honestly, if I had to say that, what's my most excited thing, what am I most excited about in this update? It's probably that the, how easy it will be to go from twin motion to unreal directly and not lose anything, not lose quality, not lose. Oh, that's awesome. So learn unreal engine. <laughs> okay. We are depreciating the 2019 file version, which, oh no, like, I'm sorry. If you're using 2019, it, it makes sense. I'm sorry. Also, we're merging the depreciated 2018 and 29, what, 2019 files. So if you come up here to file and merge, if you were to merge, we can no longer do that with 2018 or 19 files. Oh darn. Once again, not a big deal. Uh, shouldn't need to worry about that because we are in 2023 at this point, nearly. Okay, moving on once again, if we come down here all the way to tools, we can see cy cyclorama, cyclorama, I, cycloramas. First of all, I didn't know what this was because I'm very far from a product designer. While I might think I am, in some cases, I am very far from that. Uh, but what these are, are basically beautiful scenes out of the box that they're fairly large, but they fit whatever you want to call this a product and it just is that easy. So what's the point of this? Well, I can literally set a product here, apply a material there, and I am just dandy. Like, look how awesome this is. I can just put this here and all of a sudden I have a beautiful product. So maybe we want to take an object and obviously not a primitive object, how boring. 
some sort of home object, uh, uh, this beautiful chair, this beautiful chair, this beautiful chair. Oh, we need to download the beautiful chair. I'm so sorry. Uh, we're we're going to have to download a few more things here, but we have a lot more to work with. This beautiful chair is going to go right there. So all of a sudden, I am now the product designer for this chair in this beautiful project environment. So what kind of backdrop do we want? I don't know, probably not glass. Um, any sort of nice wood, you know, this is beautiful. Not maybe that one, boom, look at this. So all of a sudden I, this is great. You know, I have this wonderful backdrop and I'm good to go. Now, again, I'm very far from a product designer, but that is a fantastic starting point for anything. Absolutely anything. It's even if you want to just take a different kind of a shot, or if you want to look at what a material looks like, I don't know anything mainly for product design, but really cool stuff. Really cool. And then moving on, we also have virtual production, which is only right now an LED wall. I mean, you want to talk about crazy product design here, LED wall. So I'm going to put this here. Look at this. Look, look at this. Well, first of all, it looks like a rainbow calendar, but <laughs> uh, we're going to have to save this for another video. But in and of itself, there's tons of different things here. We can literally put a texture, and the, the default texture happens to be Twin Motion's like what 2020 preview or something i don't know it's just it's funny uh i like that but then we can you know make it a green screen or you know any color screen we want so cool and from that we we can increase the size the height. like i mean come on guys th this is awesome now again i'm not a product designer so do i know how to use this technically no but am i going to find a way to use it that's fun creative and probably wrong yes so stick around for that video too because this is going to be super interesting okay so we look at that we are not a product designer but we like it materials we can move down here and look car paint yes we've had come some car paint before but man this is this is some great looking stuff here so Yes, uh, we. I don't think we, we cannot apply these to cars, unfortunately, like within Twin Motion. Uh, but if I were to import a car or something like that, I totally could. So let's get an object out here to uh, put this on. Again, I keep thinking primitive is the way to go. It's totally not the way to go. Um, office. Let's take this not so beautiful trash can and look at some car paint. I mean, come on here. Let's let's see what this car paint paint really looks like. Look at this. Oh yeah, that is just gorgeous stuff. Very hard to tell. Car paint, there's my car paint, car paint. Better yet, let's just throw it here. Yeah, there's my car paint landscape. This is some beautiful stuff. So I, I'm not so much a car person, so it's harder to appreciate it, but you can see this is great. It is, it, it's basically fun metal material on steroids. And I, not only that, but I can, I can take this pretty far. You know, how intense do I want these these flakes to be Ugh. I mean again I'm not so much a car person but there's a lot that we can start to do with this and this is pretty nice looking stuff I mean, quality right there we don't even have the path tracer on I mean man okay so we've completely ruined this trash can totally fine okay opacity map so this is very exciting and I cannot believe in within twin motion we didn't have this as an option in the past and that is and we're going to come back to our fun little cube which is right here and we're going to apply uh, probably a bit of a different material to it but it's also going to be glass so as i first of all as i scroll down we can see yeah we have these different types of glass which we saw but we have these it's called square blackout 33 percent whatever circle blackout 33 percent and i i'm gonna first apply a mirror here we can see yep there's our our cube again there is our cube, but now I'm going to come down here and add this square blackout 33%. Look at this. Well, what are we looking at? First of all, we are looking at basically a cutout, a cutout. It we're, it's like it's on or off. It's cut out, which is fantastic. So we can literally see through it. It's a hundred percent transparent wherever we decide and wherever we decide is based on the map. In this case, these are just defaults, which again is awesome i why do you want this well i want this because a lot of times i'm doing perforated panels hello and i believe me and if you haven't thought of this yet don't do or like do it i would never model all the individual little holes unless it, i needed them in a specific location and normally i don't if i just need it 33 percent or whatever so 
you tackle that by a texture. You make a nice flat wall or flat piece that any modeling program can handle. And then you do this nice texture that makes it look like you need to perfectly. Now, if I'm doing perforated panels or something, I'm probably not going to use either any, really any of these, but what I can do is look at the opacity. Well, obviously the opacity is only going to affect that portion, which is really cool. That's nice. Obviously the scale works all this, everything works the same, which is so cool. We can make this two sided, not a big deal, which means we can see through it. Awesome. I'm clipping here. So if we wanted to truly act like glass, we would do that. That's really cool. Something that we can do and where I can show you how this is working is if we come into the opacity more, we could see use mask and that's either on or off. And if we turn this off, we could see, Oh, look, that's literally turning off all of the cutout, essentially, basically all the space that's not there, which is great. We can come into more and look, that's exactly what I was looking for. There it is perfectly the invert. So lots of levels here, but going into opacity, making sure uh, that obviously we are hundred percent on the opacity here. We can use the mask. We want to make sure we use it still, but then we see we go into more and then we can either use the map or not. If, obviously if we don't use it, it's gone, but I can choose to invert this or not. Now to make this a little more obvious, let's go back in here and change the scale. So scale, we can see a lot of different things here and going back here into opacity, we can see once we invert this map, okay, that's what we want. And that is our perforated panel, ta-da, you know, that kind of thing. Now I, I would do this exact same thing within a metal material and we can do that, which is awesome. So we come over here, metal right here to Chrome. Now it, it's not where I thought it was, but it is actually here within the color and it's use mask. So this is, it's within the use the mask. And then we can see, look, opacity map currently is it's nothing. So if I put it on and I invert it, obviously if I put it on and invert it, that's not going to do anything, but basically shut off everything else else that I have. So if I were to update this file to have the cutouts that I want, I can use it. And even if I need to, I can invert it. Great. So cool. Just know that you can cut out anything of any object by simply adding it there. If I just literally I could just put a circle and just done one circle, obviously that would affect the scale and all this. So you might need to add more like that, whatever it's a trial and error thing, but you can figure it out. But the capabilities of doing that is fantastic. And you can do it with anything, any material. Awesome. Love that so much. And then finally color correction, which is awesome. You know, I can't say that I'm itching to do this, but if I just need something slightly different, so let's go ahead and put this wood on here. Wood looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and put this 0.5. So yeah, like this looks good. looks great. But maybe I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, Oh, you know, if this wood looked just a bit darker, it might make sense. And there's a few ways I can make it darker. Like I can obviously do this, but I don't want to, I mean, I don't want to make it darker like that. Um, and maybe I want it to be a little more orange and dark. I don't want to lose my pre precision. I want to keep it kind of natural the way it is as the material. So I can come in here to more in color. And once again, coming into the actual texture is not just the map. Actually, it's not the map at all because this is almost within the map. We have full gamma control, lift, gain, and saturation. So really I would, I would look to do a lot of this yourself, but it's, it's really nice. You can see the level of control that you have here. So clearly, um, I don't want to do a lot of these things, but clearly I can, I can go as far as I want. These are literally specific RGB colors for each one of those. And so, yes, in a sense, I can kind of do the same thing just by picking a color <laughs> in the main color, but, uh, I don't want to do that necessarily. I want to have a little bit more control and all of these have full RGB control. And obviously I can make this look awful very quickly, not like wood at all, but uh, obviously if you know more than I do about what you're doing, as far as the color goes, then you can make this look a heck of a lot better. And the thing to note is once I start affecting these values here, specifically the RGB values, then the saturation will start to work. If you notice before I did any of that, that the saturation did not do anything. Let's take this away 
and put this material back. So it's the fresh material right here. If I come into the color and then the texture, the RGB does nothing. And that's because it's running off of all of these values here that are currently like set to default. They're unaffected as you could kind of imagine. They're all set to zero. They're basically just the map itself. They're unaffected. So this RGB saturation does nothing. So don't mess with this first and then come in here because you're going to get much more dramatic changes immediately. So <laughs> just know that. Um, something else here is if I change this from one all the way up to, well, if I look at look at the values are as one, they're basically they're all one. And just know that this is doing everything by, you know, by its uh, all across the board. Putting, see the gain at one, this is all at one. If I want this not at one, then all of a sudden the gain is right there. And just, you know, moving it all here uh, affects them all. And so you're, you're really kind of messing with things all over the place by moving all these sliders, but just play with it and know what you're doing. Obviously this is not wood. It is very sick looking wood. All right. So then we have, I've already covered the metal, metal, metalness, all of that, the levels of it. Um, there's a path tracer improvement. It's just, it's improved, which is great. And then we finally have replace container, which I think is quite interesting. So if you're familiar with replace object, it's pretty similar, but it's slightly different. So basically we can now replace the contents of a container with the contents of another while retaining the coordinates of the initial container. That's fantastic. So I'll, I'll save that for another video, but yeah, you can find it right here. You can right click this and you can see there's replace container and you'll only see that usable is if, if you select two different at least two different containers and then right click the actual container so that that is it uh, for replacing containers again we'll save that for another video uh, not a lot to it it's more of like okay i care about where the coordinates are and things like that while replacing it so things in that nature and then finally the last but not least twin motion now supports open xr when it comes to VR, it's basically just a, a VR format that is widely acceptable, widely used in the Open XR API. Very, very interesting. So that basically allows any headset, any virtual reality headset from you know all the weird third parties and whatnot to be usable with Twin Motion. That's cool. As long as that VR headset has the capabilities of switching to an Open XR runtime then you're good to go. They just know that that is essentially what is now kind of the standard universal format for uh, virtual reality and just getting it to run. <laughs> and we're even seeing some web browsers introduce open XR and have that implemented within the actual <laughs> browser so that you can use your headset in a browser setting. So interesting stuff. And it's nice to see that within twin motion as well. So really cool stuff. I bet we can see, a lot more developments with the VR and you know, Unreal and Twin Motion all kind of working together down the line. So that was a mouthful. And hopefully you found this to be worth your time because we did spend a long time looking at lots of different things. Again, there were a lot of updates with 2023. This is a brand new release, a whole year release for Twin Motion. Fantastic stuff. And I'm so excited to really dive into these uh, more detail, like specifically having their own video. Uh, because a lot of these are big enough to where they do deserve a more detailed look in their own video. So be on the lookout for that. There will be a lot more videos on all these features, uh, but in a more detailed sense, because I believe that's important. So I will see you in the next video. If you have any questions, let me know what you're excited about. Leave that in the comment section below. I want to know what you're most excited about with all of these different updates, because there are a lot. Where do you see the direction of Twinmotion going? Are you excited? And I, I don't know. We'll see. I'm really happy with this and I cannot wait to see the full release and everything else in 2023. So please stick around if you did like the video and you happen to learn something, which I hope you did, please demolish that like button really helps me out quite a lot. Also subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content because you just found out what is coming down the pipeline. And that is a lot more videos on all of these detailed updates for Twin Motion 2023. So. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for spending the time. If you lasted this long, you're awesome. I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.